Welcome to the Twisted Tentacle Inn. I'm your innkeeper, Vase Odin, and today we'll be talking about action economy. Last video, we talked about basic action economy. We established that cards like the 45 Automatic and Deduction grant excellent action economy. In this video, we'll dive a bit deeper into the nuance of true action economy and the implications of valuing card versus resource versus action. This will get a bit mathy at times, but hang in there as it'll be worthwhile in helping you build decks that leverage action economy. In a vacuum, a card and a resource are each worth an action. All three are equal. But this video aims to explore the techniques and thought process involved in assessing the true value of action economy cards. And that is because the value of a resource or a card vary greatly depending on the situation. First, let's establish my thoughts on something. A general consensus within the Arkham Horror LCG community is that an action is almost always worth more than a card, which is almost always worth more than a resource. This was intended to guide people when making decisions for both deck building and strategy. The basic thought is, if you're deciding between three cards and one grants you a free action, one lets you draw a card, and one lets you gain a resource, the action is usually the best pick. When strategizing, if a treachery makes you choose between losing an action, a card, or a resource, usually the action is the thing you least want to lose. Generally, I think this is pretty solid advice, but keep in mind that there are always exceptions. In fact, each situation and card should be analyzed to get the true benefit or cost of playing or losing that card. Let's go back to our first example from the basics video, which I'll link above. Under normal circumstances, emergency cash equals gaining the benefits of what would normally be three actions, that would be three resources, for the cost of what would be two actions, an action and a card. By using uh, emergency cash when you need exactly three resources to play a crucial card, it could save you three actions or more, because you can play the card that costs three before the next mythos phase, which can be extremely unpredictable and affect the outcome of being able to play that card next round. So instead of wasting three actions to gain three resources and waiting until next turn to play your card, you played one card and got your important card out with still an action left in the turn. That's using emergency cash wisely. In other words, emergency cash is really worth a lot more economy if you spe specifically need all three resources right away. On the other side of the coin, if you only really needed two resources and the third is just going to sit there for a few rounds, then you really didn't get the equivalent of three actions with one card and one action. Because you didn't have cash in your hand, you would have just used two actions, not three, to get the two resources you needed. So really it just saved you one action for the cost of a card. Some cards may seem like they're barely decent action economy cards, but secretly can hold far more potency than you first might realize, or some may seem amazing but are less than stellar if used suboptimally. Some people have suggested that having to set up a board will be setting you back from the beginning of the game and can cost you valuable actions. For those who don't know, setting up your board is the phrase used to describe some deck's requirement to play several asset cards before even beginning to do anything else. Generally mystics and guardians tend to have to set up before being effective at anything. Setting up your board is important to your success in a lot of decks and you shouldn't feel inefficient if your deck requires some setup to work well. The true value of an action you take or a card you play depends a lot on a lot of factors. Learning to analyze the game state and determine whether spending the time to set up is a waste of time or uh, not is something that we're going to be exploring next. In the last video I mentioned the 45 automatic. In its most simplified form, the 45 automatic grants you the benefit of saving you an action in combat by dealing 2 damage to a creature at the cost of one successful attack action. But unlike emergency cash, the 45 automatic requires you to use an action and spend 4 resources 
in order to put it into play before you can begin using it. This means that if during the span of a scenario you only use the 45 to kill one 2 health enemy, you didn't actually gain any economy. If you fought a 3 health creature and used the 45 twice to kill it, you still just came up even on the number of actions that it saved you. One action to play the card and two actions to shoot, so three actions, which is what it would have taken to just use the attack action three times. So if this is the case, why do people think weapons like the 45 automatic are so much better than just attacking with no weapon? Well, there are a couple of benefits that require a bit of calculation to truly appreciate. The first is a bit obvious. The 45 grants you a plus one to your combat skill when you use it to attack. The average enemy has a combat value of three. This means that your best chance of hitting this enemy is if you can get your fight value to a five. That's assuming you're playing on standard. Assuming an investigator with a combat value of 4 playing Miskatonic Museum of the Dunwich Legacy on standard, it means the investigator will hit an enemy with a combat score of 3, 8 out of 15 attempts, if they just punch. The same investigator will hit 10 out of 15 or 4 out of 5 with the 45 automatic. Obviously, ammo limitations are a thing, but this is just for the sake of statistics. What this means is that just the attack bonus of the 45 grants you action economy by saving you a wasted fight action around every, every three times that you initiate the fight action. Now let's factor the damage bonus with the combat bonus in a card with unlimited ammo. We'll use a certain card that starts with an M and rhymes with Achete. With the same example of a combat 4 investigator in early Dunwich against a combat 3 creature on standard you'll be dealing an average of 20 damage every 15 fight actions versus 8 damage every 15 fight actions when attacking without a weapon. You can literally take less than half the number of actions that you than you would be if punching and do almost as much damage with the machete. This is even more dramatic if your investigator has a combat value of 3 against that same enemy. If you attack without a weapon, you'll hit 4 out of 15 times versus 7 out of 15 using the machete. If you consider the plus 1 attack bonus and factor in that you're dealing 2 damage per successful attack instead of 1, an investigator with a fight of 3 in early Dunwich will actually be doing the equivalent of 14 damage every 15 attacks versus 4 every 15. That's almost 4 damage for every single one that you do when punching. Of course, this is just an example so that you can grasp the concept of true action economy. These numbers apply to this particular situation and the benefits can be more or less depending on the investigator and the enemy, but I think you get the point. The key here is that extra point of damage. Essentially, you get a free damage without having to make a second skill test. What makes a weapon like the machete or any card that guarantees success without a skill test so good is that by taking away the chance of failure, you're potentially saving several actions, not just one. So a card like Working a Hunch from the core set is a perfect example of the real action economy of such cards because it gets you a clue without a test. I remember a playthrough of the scenario Heart of the Elders, uh, which you can find on this channel, where I failed an investigation check testing a four intellect against a three shroud, and I failed about five times in a row. Those five actions were very costly. And if I had a card like Working a Hunch, the entire scenario could have gone differently. That one card would have saved me five actions. Estimating your chance of success on a skill test is very chaos bag and scenario dependent. Clearly, you're not going to whip out a calculator and do math every time that you need to take a skill test. But being able to quickly estimate the chance of success before taking a test or playing a card can help you make better decisions about whether it is worth it to use your ammo or commit a deduction to an investigate test. There are also some great cards that help you gain action economy in just about every faction. I'm going to list a few here now to get your wheels turning. Ever Vigilant, one of the single best action economy cards in the game. One action allows you to play up to three assets at a reduced cost by one resource each, potentially granting you the equivalent of three actions and three resources for one action and a card. But don't hold on to this until you have three cards in hand. If you have only two cards to play with this card, it's still worth it. It's also worth it to play three assets that each cause zero resources, because you're still getting to play three cards for one action. 
Dynamite Blast. Three testless damage can easily save you several actions. The action value of this card is exponentially better the lower your fight value. It also gets better the more enemies there are at the location that you target. So someone like Carolyn Fern, who has a fight value of 2, can potentially save over 10 actions with a card like this. Sleight of Hand. A fast action for one resource and you can play an item asset which returns to your hand at the end of the round. Use it on a 45 automatic and you've essentially gained 3 extra ammunition. With the examples above we learned that each ammo can gain you serious action economy, so this can potentially save you several turns. Elusive. You can move to any revealed location in the game, so this potentially can get you 5 or 6 locations away, saving you that many actions. Double or nothing. Getting twice the reward without having to spend twice the cost is so big I'm shocked that this card is a level 0 card. Doubling the difficulty of a test usually equals having to spend just a few resources or a few extra cards to succeed, but the payoff can be so big. I've literally had skill tests where a success got me 8 damage against an enemy, 12 resources, and 2 free actions because of the cards that I committed to the test. Nothing in the game even comes close. The only drawback is that you need other cards to make this card work better for you, usually. But if you have this in your deck, you probably are going to have such types of cards. Seal of the Elder Sign. It's pretty much a guarantee of success on any skill test. In a Father Mateo deck, it equals automatic success, even for a test where you're testing a 1 versus a 10, and you get a free action and a card and a resource. So, or a free action or a card and a resource. It's just a wild wow card. Six Sense. The power of this card increases based on the difference between the intellect and willpower scores of the investigator using it. In a Father Mateo deck, for example, it equals a plus one bonus to investigate since his intellect is three and his willpower is a four. In Akachi, on the other hand, this equals a permanent plus three bonus to investigate checks. As we mathed out earlier, this can exponentially decrease the number of actions wasted while using the investigate action. But it gets even better since it can potentially allow you to investigate a connecting location, saving you an action required to move there. Even though you're not getting extra clues, this card is powerful in Ashcan Pete, Zoe, and a lot of mystics. Plus it gets even stronger in solo, where a bonus to investigate is usually a lot better than getting extra clues, since most locations only have one clue anyways. Deciphered Reality. One test can get you tons of clues, and the difficulty is only equal to the highest shroud location in play. This is better in some scenarios than others, but when you pull it off, man, oh man. <laughs> Let's say there's uh, six locations in play. Not only are you nabbing six clues, but you don't have to spend the actions to move to each of those locations, which can save you over ten actions easily. Pathfinder. A free move every round is very strong. Over the course of the game, if you get this early enough, it can total over a dozen actions saved. Track Shoes. Potentially a free move every round can net you a ton of action economy. Having to succeed on a test keeps this from being overpowered, but it still grants you a static bonus to agility, so it's still very powerful. Will to survive. Not having to reveal chaos tokens for an entire turn can save you from having to overcommit cards and resources for tests and can grant you a turn of guaranteed successful skill tests with zero chance of failure. This can equal a lot of saved actions. Most of the best cards in the game are good because they accomplish a lot with very little investment in terms of resources, cards, or actions. Most will free up your other actions to get more done in less time. Getting in the right frame of mind to determine the action value of a card when you build your decks will help you narrow down your options and get the best use out of your cards. If you're playing multiplayer or solo, I recommend using weapons or spells that grant extra damage or cards that provide testless damage over ones that just give you a bonus. For multiplayer, cards that boost intellect, cards that give testless clues, and cards that grant extra clues are ideal. For solo, go for cards that give intellect bonuses and testless clues. I don't recommend using too many cards that give you extra clues for solo, something like fingerprint kit, since most locations in solo play have only one clue on them anyways. Of course, how certain cards interact with others is important and should also be an aspect of your deck building, as should be theme and flavor. 
But if you keep some of the concepts presented in this video in mind when building your decks, and you'll find a noticeable improvement in the success rate of your games. And that does it for today's video on Action Economy. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down there in the comments below. This is Innkeeper Vase Odin. Check in anytime. I'll talk to you then.